Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. If we can call to order at 6.30. Uh, we have three things. Well, we have a bunch of things on our agenda tonight, but three things that are really, really important. We've got to get a town meeting warrant that's signed. That's important. We've got to update you about how town meeting may is likely go. That's important. Um, we have... Uh, change in the energy aggregation mix as people who have paid attention uh, know that it was uh, it was a program that was going out to bid when the bids came back and now we have an opportunity to respond to a more healthy mix for the New England region and I'd like to start off by thanking the folks who participated on uh, Friday at the Memorial Day service uh, FCAT, Jeff um, Senator Comerford, Rep. Blay, uh, dignitaries from town, I say that tongue-in-cheek, and uh, still taking time to remember uh, Memorial Day, uh, the sacrifices made by so many, including so many who have died to uh, bestow us with the freedoms that we've got. So uh, that said, I want to switch to municipal energy aggregation. Jeff, there's a change in the mix. So we're not going to buy a bunch of cheap energy from Texas Wind? That's correct. We, uh, when the final pricing came in, there was a more local option. It's uh, RPS plus 5% of Massachusetts Class 1 RECs. Um, that also came in for the first five months below Eversource's current rate. Um, so that we thought that was a... a Better, better option, um, more investment in local renewables, uh, and still uh, a lower rate for residents. Excellent. So how does that look as we go forward? We're going to take uh, have the discussion tonight versus that versus buying uh, Texas Wind. Again, this is the, this is the uh, not the delivery services. These are your energy providers. If you look at your energy, it's going to be a split bill. And this is the kilowatt by the producers, not the deliverers. And that's where we're headed right now. And it was less expensive than the first go around. Correct. The, the final Excellent. pricing came in less expensive. Um, and then after five months, we would still switch to the uh, RPS plus 25% mm -hmm. mass class one RECs. Um, so that, and that would be for the uh, an additional 36 months. So the, the rest and, and the two optionals would stay the same. Aaron, do we capture that well? Yes, you got it exactly. I, it, it's so much rehearsing. I appreciate the, not only your effort, but also the, the feedback and the correspondence saying that this was an opportunity to keep money, frankly, local. And uh, that's a good thing. Yes. Okay, discussion of members of the board. Hey, Elliot. Um, hi. <laughs> no, I, th I think I think that's good. I think you hit all the all the important things. I mean, we've got um, we hit our key goal of keeping it lower than ever source, keeping it the price stable, and then as a benefit, we've got some local uh, renewables in there. So. That's kind of a, a good win, I think. Excellent. Excellent. Tom, any comments? Uh, no. Uh, I think that uh, it speaks for itself, wouldn't you say, Aaron? The pricing and everything? Yes, I think so. When we talked about it last week, there was only one green product that came in cheaper than every source, and that was a national wind, which is why we went for that. The following Wednesday, when we got the executable pricing, the final pricing, then we discovered that the mass RPS plus 5% came in cheaper. So that was the preferable product in our um, estimation. So that's why we're back talking about it today. Nice. Well, it sounds like win-win all the way around, not wind-wind for Texas. Ha, ha, ha. Sorry, I had to do that. All right. If there's any more discussion, if not, I'll entertain a motion to change our mix uh, as, uh, as has been presented. And uh, all those, excuse me, I'll entertain the motion. Second. We got a motion, we got a second. All those in favor of changing our mix away from 
initial uh, p buying period from Texas Wind to the Mass uh, Rec. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, three to zero. I see, Aaron. I said it would take five minutes. Okay. Uh, next up, approved minutes of uh, May 18, 2020. Good. Oh, Hang on. Good. Hello. Hello. Hi, this is Francis. Hey, Francis. How are you tonight? I'm good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Thanks for joining us tonight. You're very welcome. I just have a question about uh, the energy uh, mix. This is for the town, right? For, for town hall, elementary school, library? That's for all. Yeah, go ahead, Tom. It, it, uh, Francis, it's for uh, all the town residents. All it's actually towns. 13 towns. Huh? Right, that's true. 13 towns. Oh, thir well, I, specifically though, we're talking about all. It is we're 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 an aggregate group of people, but uh, correct. Kind of, but but specifically, it's any and it's a opt out program. Um, so it's for the residents in the town of Sunderland in particular. We're talking about. Good point, Tom. So how does it benefit people like me who already have uh, a, a, a solar energy on, on their roofs? Um, it may not. It may not benefit you, actually, Francis. Um, I, I, again, it, it depends on what what you're paying and how much you're paying and all of that. Right. Um, so it, it it may you you specifically it may not be an advantage to. I got it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Can I so, just weigh in on that for a second? Yeah, go ahead, Aaron. Maybe a little deeper in the weeds. And I, I say that I was going to say something myself, but I'll let yeah. you. I, I'm sure we captured the same thought. Very likely. Um, if your solar array is tied to the grid, there are some months when you're producing more energy than you need, and other months you're not producing enough, so you're buying it from every source. Right. Under the aggregation plan, when you buy energy, you will no longer be buying it from every source as a supplier. You'll still be an every source customer, but the energy will now come from the aggregation agreement from this other sources that we just talked about, and it will be cheaper than every source's price. So on those months that you'll be buying energy to supplement your solar array, it will be cheaper and greener than what you were buying previously. Okay, thank you, Jeff. You were going to say, Scott? No, I was just going to say, and it doesn't affect your relationship for your RECs or your generation at all. It's, on, it's only for what you buy. Right. And frankly, I, I haven't bought any in, in years, so it doesn't really apply. <laughs> Good for you. That's nice, Francis. <laughs> okay. Uh, Having captured that, any other discussion around this? Uh, if if not, we'll move on to the minutes of the 18th. And good for you, Francis. You're, you're another notch to being my my newest hero. Thank you, Scott. Uh, this was our declaration of emergency grocers discussion, municipal energy aggregation, the first pass. And then when again, we just voted tonight to flip that mix a little bit to help with uh, some local resources. Remember this is an opt in choice, um, excuse me, opt out choice. So you can, you can go back to Eversource if you want to pay a little bit more. It's not a problem. You're welcome to do that. Uh, annual town meeting review, administrator updates. A motion on the minutes. Motion. Second. Mo motions made on the minutes and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next up, Oop, don't lose my agenda. Uh, annual town meeting warrant articles. So we have to sign the warrant tonight. Jeff, is there a signature page here for us? I believe it's in the to be signed folder. Excellent. It is. Excellent. Okay, so under the warrant itself, and I'm scrolling through my 
laptop. Jeff, would it be okay if you put up the warrant so we could look at it collectively? Absolutely. And then I'll look at it on a bigger screen. Mm -hmm. And there's a cheat sheet and that you have on there, votes taken on the ATM. Hello, everybody. So let's, let's start with that, right? We know we have to take action on one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, I'm sorry, six, eight, nine, and 11. And the rest is done. So that, that's our homework today. And so reports, you know, we, we go ahead. Uh, there was just one more um, to remove the frontier capital warrant article since that's in court, a vote to remove it. Correct. Yeah. Actions that we have to take tonight to make the warrant clean. Yeah. So if we could go down uh, Tom, David and company looking at these things, there are a couple and they all hinge on uh, number three, the operating budget, as well as, well, they all hinge on number three. So if we could scroll up, Jeff, and look at our do, 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 uh, balances and uses of accounts based on COLA. And we'll have to start right with the nitty gritty. So we have an operating budget in front of us that's based on the personnel committee's recommendation for COLAs. And we have our uses of free cash stabilization, Title V capital stabilization, et cetera. We can't do anything until we figure out what we're gonna do with our estimate. And so Jeff, can we go to, that's the sheet, you got it. That sheet is predicated on a reduction of 20% estimate from the state aid to the municipality plus state aid to education. We're also estimating, proposing an estimate of local receipts dropping, but because of the nature of local receipts, kind of like on a more of a glide path than a drop like the state has of a 5% reduction. Tom or David, any concerns about those those kind of estimate targets as we go forward? Um, Feedback. Not yet. Yeah. Uh, Scott, I, I right now I, I don't know how what we're saying is that these are estimates. Correct. Yeah. My mm -hmm. my concern. And and I and I haven't and I, I don't think we have addressed it is what happens if we don't hit our estimates. Well, you either mechanically, from a purely a mechanical perspective, you use one time funds to close the year's budget gap or you make you know reductions at an, a special town meeting. Well, I understand the mechanics. I get it. So, so I guess knowing, so understanding the mechanics, um, my, my question is, and, and I will say it last week, and I, I'm going to say it again. I don't think that we should balance the budget on the back of our non-unionized town employees. Um, so if, if, we're, if we are a team, there should be some agreement across the the entire landscape of our employees that we're, if we if these numbers don't if we don't hit our number, then there's going to be a shared um, response. It's going to be because I, and again I, I again we've done it before. Uh, I just don't, I, and I, I think, you know, we, we, we did what we had to do. We know right now it's, it's not our problem. It's not our budgeting problem. It's, it's, it's something that goes way beyond us. And I would just hate to once again say to the town employees, 
you guys have to suck it up again as, as a certain segment of our, of the employees get pay raises and others don't. So how do we, so Tom, are you that asking that doesn't happen? So how do we go about that? We have a correspondence to all of the education that the town supports and it's asking for a wage freeze for 2021. You want to take action on that first, send it, and then go back to the discussion? Um, or do you want to simply say, listen, schools, everybody. I'm not saying just schools. I'm saying any, any of our, any of our, I, I, I want, I, and again, when we asked for an override the last two years, we did it as, a, as everybody pulling together. Right. Okay. And, and I haven't seen, seen that same um, strength of conviction across all of our, uh, all of our budget areas. And, 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 okay. and I, I'm just concerned, Scott. I, and again, we can have a, we can have, we can, we can have a, we can have a letter going out to it. But once we, once, once we vote that school budget, once we vote that police budget, once we vote the town highway budget, those numbers are there. We only have very few options on what we can control after that, what goes, what makes up to that budget. So in a, in a blue sky exercise, what would you like to see? I, I would, I'd love to see someone say that we're all this in this together and we're going to work with you when it's needed if it's needed and come up with a plan. We've been asking for that. We have, I, I, maybe I missed it. Did, 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 did everybody, is everybody on board and saying that they're going to work with us? Did I miss that? Are you, are you referring specifically like to finance right now or, or just the, the, all the groups across the board? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm talking, I'm talking about, the, the, the parts of the budget that I don't have control over. The select, you know, I, I can say, and, and George knows we've done this before, we can go up to George and we can say, George, you need to lay off a guy yeah. in the highway department. And George says, but, 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 and we say, George, you need to lay off a guy and George, George would have to lay somebody off. I, I, can't, I can't do that by, in the library. I can't do that in the schools. I can't, it, it's different. They're, they're, they have different levels of control. So, so do I, so we end up, so if we can't, if we can't balance the budget because we don't have the revenue, forecasted revenue, so then, so then do I say, okay, the town office building is only open 20 hours a week and the only people that get affected are the people working in town, the town, the town office building or should every, or should everybody that's employed by, that collects a paycheck that says town of Sunderland on it, should everybody share in that, should be a shared pain. Is there is there any like legal precedent for being able to do that in a, a binding way even? Um, I don't know, Elliot. That, just, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, just I, just making a statement. I mean, is it, it goes a long way? It definitely would. But if 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 I, if I had if if the if the if the in if the library trustees, the chair of the library trustees come over, and, and, and I'm not picking on the library, and I'm just using it as an example, and, and, and I think they would. And they said, Tom, look, we understand what's happening. We're, we're going to try to work with you no matter what's happened. I say, thank you very, miss, thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Chair, and I can move on. I haven't heard, I haven't heard that in unison from all, all of the non and, and frontier um, the elementary school, I have not heard that um, unless Peter or somebody in the school committee can, can say that they have heard that. I have not heard that. That's my concern. I've, I've heard Peter. we don't want to set precedent. Peter or Greg, you want to weigh in on that? Hey, it's Peter. Can hey, you Peter. Hear me? Um, yes, sir. 
you know, we, we have, any discussion that I have had about that has been in the executive session that we had at the last meeting, um, you know, about the, I mean, at this point we have uh, no contract with the teachers union. Um, and so under the rule that continues, the existing contract continues. Um, I think that's illegal, Peter. What's illegal? I, I don't know if, I don't know if uh, there's evergreen clauses are, are, are legal. Scott, remember? Well, well, that's, let's, 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 let me just say what I, I, I wanted to say, which was that, um, I can't be specific. I can say that there's very much been an understanding from uh, our side from the beginning of this back a couple of months ago when it was clear that budgets were going uh, in a terrible direction, that we're all in this together. Okay, I can't, you know, and that, and that, that feeling and that statement will continue you know, as long as we're, we're dealing with the FY20 budget, the FY21 budget, the FY22 budget. Um, I can, on the other hand, say we are going, you know, we promised to do this because, uh, you know, there are negotiations that need to take place, you know, when you're dealing with unions. I, all I can say is that, um, you know, we have, uh, you know, I speak for myself. I have the intention that we are part of the town. And if the town has got a situation where state aid is even worse than, than what we're looking at, um, then it's beholden on all of us to try and find a solution. Uh, and all I can offer you is good faith. And I'm just one person, but I think, you know, that's, that's been um, the way we've tried to, to deal with this situation on our part. And I expect that to continue. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate that. So piggybacking on that from Tom's uh, points a week ago, we talked about a correspondence to all of our partners in education. And that was to ask for a wage freeze. And that correspondence is down the packet. You want to go to that, Tom, or do you want to continue on this track? Uh, Scott, I don't care. I, I, I and again, I, I just, I, I said, I think we said a long time ago that to make this happen, we needed the all parties to get together, the town, the, the chair, the, the board, the the finance committee, the schools, the administration, the employees. Not necessarily everybody got in the Everybody got to get together and have conversation. To tell you the truth, having executive sessions and not not including the town that you're coming to the money to get the money from, it, it to me is kind of disingenuous. And and if you want if you want to solve problems, you need to you need to open up and have conversations. And and having those conversations is how you is is how you build trust and how you build um, a consensus. And 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 as far as I know, and it's unless unless this is not the state of New York where the town uh, has one budget and the school has to rep its own budgets, this is the state of Massachusetts, and we're all supposed to be one. We should all be in those conversations, and so we all have the same information, so that we can move together as one, not as individuals. So after that, Scott, I'm not, I'm I said my piece. I'll just stop talking because. I'm, I'm a little frustrated right now. Sure. Understood. So let's move down to that correspondence, Jeff. Right. And again, this correspondence is clear. And that is that we're asking all of the districts as well as Union 38 that we participate in for wage freeze for 2021. Do, do, do. in there somewhere right it's and like it's way this, in the back it's the same it's the same letter for each of the district or each of the education components so we'll pick on tech school right now and in that you know the final paragraph is the real nut 
Jeff, is this the original letter? Uh, yeah. I can yeah, let's get rid of that one. Thanks. So to be clear, the original letter included language that says facing layoffs. That's not the case at this point, and it was not the right message to send. So last paragraph is the interesting part and the most important part, right? Reopen those are committed to all of our employees who want to make sure that we are equitably treated. And I think, Tom, that echoes your point, right? We should be talking about this collectively. Absolutely, Scott. So is there a motion to sign and send? Motion. Second. Motion's made and seconded to sign and send. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Call it three to zero, please. Okay. So again, this is going out asking specifically for wage freezes for all of our education components uh, for 2021. We know it's tough to open up negotiations. We can do that. Jeff, make sure that we have one of those for the chief of police as well as for the uh, union rep as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Back to budgets. Tom, if we were to take this forecast at 2020 uh, from the state, 20 education, 20 general government, and 5% in local receipts, you know, we can come close to um, something that is affordable. When I say affordable, that's based on the current revenues as well as our own town reserves. That said, it does not include we have two budgets in front of us. One has got a COLA request, or COLA recommendation from the personnel committee. And the second is the, the adjustments to competitiveness based on peer communities from the consultants. And that's the best and persuasive language I can use on that. So the one is 10 grand, essentially, nine and change. And another is 25 plus, is that correct, Jeff? Yes. So I've got one budget in front of me and it says COLA. The other is simply gonna change the value sprinkled across the spreadsheet and change the use of funds. Because I don't see that in my electronic version. So I got COLA only on paper. This is wage adjustment and COLA on the... So wage adjustment and COLA. COLA only shows a deficit of a gap of 69,908. Is that correct? Um, nope, they both do. It, uh, what you want to look at is the uh, free cash to balance the budget. That's where you see okay. that. So we have two budget totals you have to vote. That one's one's twenty nearly twenty six thousand dollars different than the other. Right? I see the cola only. Cola only that has a budget of eight seven three one two nine eight. If you add the Corrections based on the consultants. There's eight seven three one two nine eight change by twenty five grand. So I've got a second budget that says eight seven six three eight two two. Hey Elliot, while we researched this, what was the discussion at the finance committee regarding the wage adjustments for the 
seven to nine yeah. job classifications? This seven to nine, we, we discussed the, the budgets overall at our last mm -hmm. meeting. Uh, we didn't discuss specific, uh, the specific employees unless that's, that's just what you're referring to. I'm not no, I was curious about which budget. There was a COLA budget and yeah. then there was a COLA plus adjustments. Yeah, so when we discussed both of those versions, our consensus, it was a 4-0 consensus that we talked about that we wanted to go ahead if we can. It was, we, we came up with a number of uh, 32, something like $32,000 difference. Um, I'm trying to find out how we got that difference again, but our, we were voting in favor of uh, including the wage adjustments as well as the COLA because there were a couple of reasons that people had, but um, one that came up from my perspective was that the difference would come from free cash. Um, so the, the, looking at our, our minutes from Friday, it was the difference that would come from free cash, which we don't like to do, but it's something that would like dropping these wage increases now, it would force us to continue playing catch up that we've been doing for years. Um, and we have the, the general leaning towards this and we've also already paid for the study. And it feel like in my, I personally felt that if, if we have already paid for this study and we've gone through and done all of this work that it felt very difficult to, even in, even in light of the current circumstances, which are dire, it felt really frustrating to just walk away from that, to say, after, after we put in all this time and negotiated and talked and, and made commitments, not commitments, but we really, we voiced our support for all of our town employees and especially in the face of the unions having their own, their own negotiating and bargaining power, the town employees that are not unions, it, like, as it, it reminds me of Tom's point that they are continually getting weighed. They're, they're, they're continually being forced to, to carry the load. And that's something that we prefer to avoid if we can. Okay, thanks, Elliot. I appreciate that. Yeah. So, Jeff, we got numbers in the right buckets? We do. Uh, there, there was a little bit of a difference because the COLA was, for, for the COLA and wage adjustments, was based on the wage adjustment plus, and then the COLA was added to the adjusted wage. Um, Come on, we can't do that. Yeah. That's what was recommended by the personnel committee. Okay, I'm going back to my original comment. Come on, we can't do that. Carry on. Um, and, and then the COLA was based on the uh, wages from fiscal year 20 um, plus 2%. So I won't express my frustration at trying to manage this conversation, but I will get a little ideological right now and suggest that piling on the step or COLA or whatever it is, taking the biggest possible bite is disingenuous to the taxpayers, regardless, regardless of the staff's position. And you guys can all yell at me about that another day. So what do you, what do you recommend in there, Mr. Chair? Uh, for me, Tom, I cannot with a straight face send a letter to all the education folks saying we want a wage freeze and then stack on a recommendation from a person, from a consultant for changing salaries. And on top of that, adding a COLA. It's a mixed message in the highest degree. Uh, Scott. Scott. Yes, Francis. Yes, Francis. Uh, there's something we... I, sh I wish you clarify 
when the personal committee made those recommendations, we did not have all this crisis we have now going on. Okay, that's number one. Number two, we felt as a group that in making this recommendation, it has to, if it takes effect, then it has to, that is, I mean, whatever we decide as a town, or you get to decide as a, as, a, as a select board, we cannot once again dump most of the Oh, I mean, how should I say this? Most of the uh, the weight of this on those few employees who do not belong to the union, I mean to unions. That is, we have. To, I mean, if if we have have to cut or not, it has to be held across the board, and everybody has to participate. We, we didn't recommend that that these employees will get their raise, I mean, whatever uh, you know, you know, the cost may be, the case may be, excuse me. What we were saying is this, if we are going to make adjustments to wages, it should be across the board, meaning that the select board has to reach out to the unions and they have to contribute as opposed to taking the path of least resistance. So, That's Francis, it. may I interrupt? Yes. Sure. So, Mr. Chair, uh, we also, we didn't know that the um, select board had drafted letters requesting <laughs> wage freezes to the, uh, to the unions when we had that discussion on, on Friday, so. That's a it's a it's a fair point. We had this discussion uh, last Monday, and the drafts are what was presented in tonight's bundle, Elliot. And we should have we should have um, made sure that that was conveyed as well to the finance committee. Um, but to to earlier point in the discussion, you know, we started with a revenue forecast, and we're trying to come to some consensus about revenue forecast as well as you know where does that burden. Uh, get shouldered in the event it comes in worse. To Tom's point, the question is, well, w you know, where are you going to go mid school year? Or where are you going to go mid police year? Or where are you going to go mid administration year? And, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing to f forecast. Also, none of it is palatable. We've got what I think is a pretty dire revenue forecast that allows us to skate through, and I use that term with every intent, skate through the current year and leave us set up in a really weak position going into 2022. If you look at the use of free cash, it's exclusively to the operating budget with the risk that there are future either reductions from the state or there are increases, and this is a tactic the state has used in the past and has done so very, very successfully, assessments go up, cherry sheet offsets go up, others, uh, you know, PBTA charges go up, all of those things, they get whacked on, pilot money drops off, you know, those kinds of things we, we don't see until uh, they're sinister, voted, and in effect. And it shows up in the, in the coming year. That's, that's a really difficult position for us to be in right now. You know, our largest, our largest piece of reserves, uh, stabilization, uh, we have steered away from using outside of the operating, using inside of the operating budget for a whole host of reasons, both, both you know, philosophical and theoretical. It's not replenishable without, without an increase in revenues. We try to keep these budgets as have been in good years and in bad years, honest. And we've been very good about being honest. 
and hitting our targets. Can Folks, I make a comment? Please. Uh, this is Linda Forge. I believe that Frontier is in the second year of a three-year contract. Is that correct? Okay. So if they've already negotiated, and I'm not sure what the teachers and instructional assistants have negotiated for a raise, mm -hmm. if they're intending to get a raise and they've negotiated it, are you asking them to give up the raise? And is that possible? The answer to both questions is yes. So do you think they're gonna be willing to do that? That's a, that, that's a different question, but until it's asked, we'll have no idea. Linda, this is uh, Tom Feidenkevitz. What what I asked yeah. last what I asked last week, and, and I will and, and I would say Francis and Elliot, I agree one hundred thousand percent with both of you. Okay, I, I don't think any any town employee, and that includes school, library, uh, police, highway, whoever, town administrator, whatever, that we should that we should sit down and we we. We would be very honest. Our books are open. We we have right in here what we're showing for our numbers, our revenue. I would say go ahead and vote and vote the the budget with the the raises in that are in there, that um, the cola that are in there, and 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 support the contract that's there. Also, treat our, our town employees fairly and give them their raises and the increases that. To bring their and 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 we 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 have to look at those equalization values because we've always cut our town employees back to balance budget elsewhere. So as as people were getting two or three percent colas with with two percent steps, we were getting a one or two percent cola for our town employees, so they've fallen behind. With that understanding, I would I would say look because we voted the budget doesn't mean that you have to pay the budget. So if we could have an agreement with all our employees to say, look, we don't, we don't know how these numbers are gonna come in. We don't know where, where, the, where, where the state's gonna do. We don't know how the state's gonna get the money back to the cities and towns of the Commonwealth. But if we, don't, if we hit our numbers, then we would release the, num the, release the money that, that was raised and, and take, Pay that back and in and, and a, and, and a lump sum buy, you know, say, okay, we owe you six months at 2% or whatever it is, and here's the money. You, you we're all in a great, we're, we're in a much better spot. At the same time, if we don't hit our numbers and, and, and that, that we can't make the budget balance, then we would say, look, guys, here's the numbers. Our books are open. We're not making it this year. We can't, get, we can't give you that 2% increase. I think that's a that's a shared way to do business. That that's being honest with our employees. That's being honest to our taxpayers. That and and that's how I would look. But when we 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 suggested it, and 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 I don't think no one no one will think. And would the unions accept it? Well, I can tell you, Linda, that the University of Massachusetts that has thirty four hundred unionized employees, three out of the three out of the major unions representing thirty four hundred people have voted and it's okay, worked with administration to have a week, each member takes a week's furlough, so they lose us a, a week's pay. So can it happen? Absolutely. But there has to be conversations between all involved, not executive sessions of certain small minority group of people talking. Everybody needs to talk. Thanks for the question, Linda. That was that was helpful. And oftentimes the mechanism is not something we have employed, uh, but can certainly be done. And it's also it's very it is very concerning knowing that many people are projecting that this is. I, I've heard the quote that this is we're only in the second inning of a nine inning game, and that we don't know how things are going to change in. 2022 what things are going to go from from next year to the year after and so that certainly makes a case Great point Elia. to really look hard at things but 
But. Well, remember, the town is effectively use 70%. It's 70% labor right across the board, whether it's the total totality of the impact of the budget or individual areas or individual districts. It's just basically humans, right? That's what it's about. You provide a service, it requires humans to do it. We don't have a lot of debt. We don't have a lot of contracted services. It's basically people. And when you look at these um, use of free cash sheet uh, from the finance committee's perspective, my finance, my old finance committee had on, you know, taking a nearly nine, almost a $9 million budget, basically a $9 million budget and uh, moving only 150,000 or $170,000 of free cash forward is just a disaster. It's a train wreck and it's going to happen. So, more discussion with regard to uh, the use of cash sheet and uh, which position you want to take. I mean, I feel, I feel quite frankly like a hypocrite sending out a letter saying freeze wages and then voting to have, you know, basically a, a wage changes based on job descriptions and then a salary increase on the town side. But hey, you know, I've been a hypocrite before. Well, officially, we can't make a recommendation, like an official recommendation tonight. We don't have more than, we don't have four people of our committee here tonight. I understand. But I, I, I don't know, Francis and Linda, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Do you have other thoughts? I mean, I, I certainly, I certainly would feel a lot of uh, guilt putting a, a, a notice like that forward on, on the town requesting wage freezes that most of them are, would hope would acquiesce to, but. It's Good very, point. It's fr it's frustrating doing this, knowing that we have, we don't know what the answer is going to be. Right. I, I kind of personally feel better going with the cola only right now, because to the same token that, um, well, for a couple of reasons, I, I understand all the things we discussed in the personnel committee, but given the budget situation right now, yeah. I think, and then what Scott was mentioning, we can't really ask for everybody that, you know, to take a cut and then, put that that increase in there and also I think this would be one year where we probably will not be falling behind other towns when you're looking <laughs> at it because I think they're all going to be going through the exact yeah. same situation you know what I mean yep. and yep. on the flip side if things aren't as bad more than likely we'll probably have to do another special town meeting anyway with the way things are going if things aren't as bad, then we can look at it at that time and maybe then say, all right, maybe, you know, things weren't as bad. So now maybe we can put in and put those other increases in there. But I, I think it, it's just too risky right now. I'd rather give somebody only a COLA and not give them, you know, that, that parity increase and save their job than to lose a job. And that is a question, I mean, that's a question that we end up looking at. I mean, because, you know, when we were starting the whole budget process and everything, none of, none of us were predicting that we'd be in the position that we're in now. But unfortunately, this is where we find ourselves. We got to figure out how to manage out of it as best we can. Well, how can we, can we codify that commitment then if, if things do end up being better if, if federal aid trickles down to state aid, trickles down to town aid. Can we, how can we clarify that, that we're, we're going so to- you'd have, So you'd have, only the, the date line is going to be December at the earliest if our, if our finance team is on its A game and gets our schedule A in and all of our recap work done, we should know on our side where we land. Then the rest of it comes out 
in a normal year, it would be January would be the House one, the governor would make an announcement, and we would know going in. As you know, this year, there has been nothing like that because they simply don't know. They're absolutely just bleeding money right now at the state level. And the feds, you know, we live in the wrong state. If we were in Florida, Arizona, you know, it'd probably be fine. But, you know, little things like assault, uh, the assault on the SALT program or et cetera, you know, ruins it because we happen to live in the Northeast. You're of the wrong political ilk. So vengeance is a dish best served by the feds these days. Yeah. Really? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's, I mean, is that not the reality? Is that is I, what it yep. seems to, seems very, the numbers don't, don't lie. The numbers support that. So. Sorry. So, Tom, you, your suggestion was appropriate and withhold. Is that correct? Yes, sir. David, what do you think about appropriating withholding? And then, Jeff, I'll turn it to you, and we'll talk about uh, both its uh, legality, can we do it? And secondly, what does it look like? Well, I mean, so, theoretically, it's not a bad idea. I'm, I guess my question is the mechanics. You just don't, you just don't expend it. Yeah. Pretty easy. But you get to tell you get to tell staff for the first six months of the year, hey, we've committed to paying you at this new rate until we find the money. And I'm not paraphrasing, that's the conversation that has to happen. So when I look at it and go, Hey, we appropriated that money, where's my money? Well, you're not getting it until we know if we have it. I think that's a mixed message personally. I wouldn't do that to my employees who frankly have all been laid off oh, for the last do, six weeks. Do, so do I don't want to do, hear about it. Do, do you, do you have uh, do you have profit sharing Scott? Yes, I do. Okay. So what's the difference between profit sharing and uh, giving somebody a raise? Uh, one's based on the performance of the organization and its success. Thank you. So you're, you're, you make my point. Yeah. That based on based on the, the success of the organization, if we don't have money to pay it, how can we pay it? And and at the same time, your guys are working, your guys are working and they're they're putting in their they're putting in 110%, knowing that if they do a good job, the company succeeds, they're gonna see profit sharing. I so I find the two I things would say it's the same thing. I would find a base salary a different discussion, but that's something that I can appreciate. I know. I, and again, you, you know, Scott, let's, let's, I, I'm going to say, you know, Scott, you, your, your work on the budget is, is, is above, above reproach. You know, there's no one, there's no selectman in, in, in Franklin County, Hampshire County, Hamden County that is as versed on the budget and, and how it works in, in Scott version. And to tell you the truth, we are very, very lucky to have, have, have Scott. And, 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 and what you do. My, 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 con my concern, okay, my concern is that, that we are, we have to have, we had to spend X amount of dollars for a study because our, our employees fell behind. Why did they fell behind? Because as, as we, we were just running, we were saying, well, we don't have the money, so we can only do, we can only give a, 1% raise or 2% COLA or, or whatever it is. As, as, as people that were having uh, contracts, they were getting a 2% COLA typically with, with a 3 to 5% step that no one ever talks about. So there was a 7% increase. We did not have that. We never had that. So I, I, I would say, so now we have, we have town employees. I, I don't think, well, and maybe the town clerk has finally got back to where she was nine years ago, just nine years ago, getting a salary that she got eight or nine, 10 years ago, Scott. No, I understand. So, so, so how, how do you, how do you percent, you know, so if, if we have the money, I say, give them, you know, give it the money. I don't know if we have the money. That, that's what I'm trying to say. Sure. So Jeff, Talk to me about the basic budget 
that's baked in right now. I have one in front of me, cola. I go to the end. I got eight, seven, three, one, two, nine, eight. Yes. And it, scribbled on top of that, it says cola only. Yep. Okay. I have another spreadsheet. Hang on. Annual town meeting. Getting to the last page now. Eight, seven, six, three, eight, two, two. Yes. And there's the eight, seven, six, three, eight, two, two. With the recommendation from the consultants, it, I believe it is this year's uh, personnel committee's recommendation for full implementation. It's not the full implementation, but yeah, based on the consultant study. And and David, can you tell us again the actual positions that are in theory being recommended to be in theory? equal to or are we moving to the top of our peers are we are we not competitive anymore we've done this for three years now where are we no longer competitive and frankly why don't we have a high turnover rate if we're not competitive um i don't remember all the positions off the top of my head i know we got one over at highway and a few other ones mm -hmm. and we're actually the goal was to get everybody up to the mid range of our peers not to get everybody to the top or just to the minimum but let's let's get to the mid section that gives you a little wiggle room so you're not putting yourself at the bottom or the top of the group and are there any outliers on the bottom <laughs> side at as of this date as of this meeting you know i don't know if i have my thing with me i don't think we have any because we okay. tried i don't mean to, to put you i don't mean to put you on the spot but no no it's all right i think because i think what we what we've been trying to do before was to get everybody at least to that minimum and then say all right now let's get everybody up to that midpoint because George, we've done that listening. with a number of library positions and some other ones yep so george you're listening right you're in here still let me look at the queue. Tick, 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 tick. You're in there. Yeah, I'm in here. Yeah. So is that is that where we're at here? Are we heading to the mid ground or are we heading to the high ground? No, we're, this is the mid ground. We all decided that we'd try to get the people with five years or ten years, five to ten years up to the middle step. And then add next year, anyone with ten years or above would go towards the top. And then everyone else would be adjusted to uh, accountant to, according to their years of service to the town of Sunderland. And David, thanks George. David, is years of service a factor in the discussion or is it peer communities? Uh, for right now, it's peer communities. Okay. To get everybody up to the minimum. We were, then we were looking at then saying, all right, once we do that, and then we can look at like years of service and take care of like those who have been here, you know, for a long period of time. But right now the key has always been the main driving factor has been rating yourself on your, among your competitive peers. Got it. Okay. So Jeff, I've got an eight, seven, six, three, eight, two, two, right? Do I have a use of cash sheet that shows eight seven three six two two? And is that the one that is well? Hang on, it's counterclockwise. Hey, does anybody know why why PDFs only rotate clockwise? Is it just like a cheap line of code they can't fix and go counterclockwise? Not enough space for the buttons in the menu. I, I'm serious. <laughs> I don't know. It's a good question. So, Jeff, is the is the free cash use with a leftover of one nine two seven two seven? Does that reflect the eight seven six three eight 
budget? Yes. Okay, so topical discussion right now. If we use, if we use no good feedback, if we use free cash only for the operating budget, for the OPEB, for an IRS payment, and $181 of unpaid bills. And by the way, good job, everybody in town. $181 of total unpaid bills in the current year. That could be a new low. Not quite yeah. new zero, but that's pretty sweet. Um, that leaves us a closing balance of $192,727 in free cash. Elliot, you've got that worksheet in front of you? Uh, I do. And again, $192,000. Yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy low. It's not good. But I get it. And again, with respect to the, popular, the personnel survey, it's only a 25-ish thousand dollar adder. The question is, and again, I go back to hypocrisy. The question is about adding any of that set against this backdrop or against the potential backdrop to Tom's point uh, of uh, greater than 20% reductions in state aid or increases in their assessments. To Tom's point, you can appropriate, but you don't have to spend. Scott. Yep. Here. How how, uh, how much is in the budget for uh, in the school? You you keep you and again this is see I I'm I'm sorry this is my concern. I hear you. How how much how much is is the uh, Southern Elementary with their with their with their two percent plus steps and how much is Frontier with their two percent in steps? Sure, I get it. Hundreds let's, of thousands. Let's let's talk about them because we're, we're talking about twenty five thousand dollars for people that people that are making forty thousand dollars a year, right? I, I, and, and and so you're you're making my point the entire time. We've been making the point. The 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 people that 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 aren't that aren't aren't in a union have no have no representation those are the people that were that were that were concentrating on yet the people that are getting some of them are getting paid m more than that and we're not even we're not even talking about their 70 80 90 100 thousand dollars uh, it, it's just Good point. inconsistent well Scott, it, it, it's 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 my point exactly and and that and, and so here it is again. We're gonna we're, we're talking about the town employees. We should we shouldn't talk. We shouldn't be talking about that. We should be talking about. And you said, well, it's disingenuous. No, the disingenuity comes when you you ask when you ask the administrators of the, of of the other groups to to look at their budget and try to hold it for one year to sit down and let's see if we can do something about that. That 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 that's the only thing that you're saying. You're, you're, you're not, you're, and, and, and you're saying, and if you, if you have these increases that, that are coming through from the personnel committee, from the finance committee, from the, uh, from the personnel committee, what you're saying is that you value our, our town employees. Right now we're saying, well, it's 25,000. Scott, $25,000 doesn't, is not going to make or break us. I understand exactly what you're saying, Tom. All right, just just so you know, but and, and and so if if you want if you want let's get the, let's get the school budget and talk about the numbers in the school for the increases. Then you're having a fair fair conversation. Right now, we're not having a fair conversation. Okay, so is there a motion to approve a budget of eight million seven hundred? I'm sorry, eight million seven hundred and sixty three thousand eight hundred and twenty two dollars based on the use of free cash and based on hopes and prayers. I'd entertain that motion. Motion. Eight, seven, six, three, eight, two, two. But unless, unless and, and for discuss, for discuss, David, you second that? Yeah, let's second for discussion. Okay, so so unless Scott, unless you're willing to bring all the all the players and all the budgets into thing, I think this is unfair discussion right now. I I, I don't see we're doing it again. We're 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 hitting on we're hitting on the town employees, and the town employees Tom, are we more have... than the, the more than the eleven that make up the twenty five thousand dollars, Scott. There's there's Tom, we just 
we just voted the recommendation of the personnel committee. We voted the higher value. Absolutely, Scott. So and, how and is that unfair? It's, it's unfair because of the conversation that we've been having. We've been talking about a $25,000. We've been talking about $25,000. And, and if you look at the total the total amount of increases due to salaries, that 25 is a little, is a drop in the bucket. Well, I get the scale. And we're not, so we're not being, we're not being fair. We're not being fair. We're not being fair to our, our residents. We're not being fair Tom. to our employees. Tom? Yes. Go ahead, Francis. Tom, uh, Tom I think you've made your point. I think we all appreciate where, you know, and I'm, by the way, I do agree with you completely, but I think we all appreciate, you know, where you're coming from, where, where, where we're coming from. You know, I harken back to uh, 20, I mean, to 2008, uh, when we went through the, uh, 2008, 2010, when we went through that horrendous period, the same thing happened. We fell back on town employees to you know, yes, carry sir. the burden. And I think we, you know, we've learned from that. And I think we all agree that, I mean, let's go forward. Like, you know, you guys just voted. And, I, and like you said, I mean, the 25 to 32 grand is, is really not that, I mean, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's not gonna make or break this town, but it will be very, very unfair to once again have to drop the load on those nine or 10, 11 employees that don't have a union a, a representation at this time. And by the way, if we go forward without you know, something like this, this is just telling the town employers that they should get their own union because that is the only way they can be heard from. That's it. Thank you, Francis. I appreciate that. Scott? Uh, you had mentioned that at, about Jeff that there's a question of legality of the idea of appropriating but withholding. Jeff, can you explain what David said today or yesterday? Yeah, or, I think it, it's when you spoke with David. It's two separate actions. There, there's the appropriation of the funds to say that they're available, and then there's the expenditures of the fund. Um, you know, actually setting each employee's salary. So I think that, that we could appropriate this budget. It was mentioned earlier, appropriate and withhold and basically say, yes, the money is there. And then in December or January, when the financial picture is clearer, uh, come back and say, yes, we have sufficient funds. And you know, here is your raise as of July 1st, 2020, um, or, <coughs> The funds are, are not available. We appropriated them in the hopes that they would be. Um, and we need to, you know, face the financial realities of today. And, and that's that, that revenues were not where we had hoped they'd be. Are, are we opening so again, ourselves up to lawsuits, though? Like, if, well, if, if it doesn't come through and we say we appropriated this and it doesn't come through, and Do we, we also, no, go ahead, Ali. But we we're just saying we have a question out there too that kind of is along what you're talking about. Um, yeah, are you, Dave, you mean the, the one in the chat? Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, would well, employees I, receive back wages for the raise they should have received? Well, in theory, that's what this is doing. But the, the big, the, you know, $32,000 question as it is, uh, so the $64,000 question is what happens if things are getting much worse and we aren't getting, but we, we don't have this. Right. What, is, what are the legal ramifications? And, and then there's the kind of, I, I think what, what Scott was alluding to is like, if we ask the schools for a wage freeze and, and almost no matter, it doesn't matter the dollar amount, it's the, the ethics behind it is, you know, we can't ask one group for a wage freeze just by the same token that, you know, we've done in the past. We can't ask one group for a freeze and then give it to another group. 
functionally that's we have something done you have that to consider. Past, well, we have, and then so then basically we would be continuing that type of behavior just with different groups. Well, yeah, it's balancing it out. Do you know what I mean? So it's like I, I, I get, I get that we're trying to create past inequities, but do we do that? Do we achieve the goal? Yeah, this is not the right word, but I'm just going to use it anyway. Ethically, by continuing it with a different inequity, you know what I mean? And then, you know, kind of like what you're saying, does that open us up to some kind of legal action? What kind of legal action, Dave? I don't know. I mean, it, it oh, would... Okay, so, so the, the question is... It's more of a question. So, so the, the, the question is, can... can in, in, I, I think we've been long enough. What, what happens is July 1st, they write a new, they write a new number in a box that goes, that gets sent to the payroll club. Okay. Now, many times we have hired a new police officer we, or, or a, a new teacher for, for example, you don't hire the teacher. If, if you, if you had a person that was at the top of the scale that happened to retire midway through the year, you don't pay that person the top, the top scale. You, you pay that person at the lesser amount. Then the school would right. use that savings and they would it, they use it elsewhere, right? So school, yep. school has been doing it all along. They, 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 it's, part, it's part of the way they do business. And, and they know that, we know that, and the, and they, the, in, in the, and the employees know it as well. So, and, and so the highway department loses a guy that, that's been there for, for 25 years and they hire a new guy, they usually don't stop that, start that person off at the top end of the scale. Well, when we went to town meeting, the guy was still employed. So now, now he's no longer here. We don't, uh, we don't pay him $30 an hour. We're probably starting him at $22 an hour. So what's the difference? Why, what's the legal ramifications? And, and, and what we're, what we're saying is that we're, we're in a, we're in a situation of pandemic that happens once a every hundred of years that right now, the latest thing is that the says the state is going to look at $6 billion coming less. They're having $6 billion less in their, in their uh, revenue that's being generated for them. 6 billion. Where do you think it's coming from? It, and, and Scott said it before he's right. It go, it, Next thing you know, it comes from pilot money. It goes from chapter 70 money. It goes to chapter 90 money, chapter 71 money. That circuit breaker that no one can figure out for special education, they start taking money out of that. So where, where, do, where do we pay? Where, how, how do we make up the difference? Well, it's certainly, it's certainly be a trial by fire next year. That's for sure. Well, Scott, I, I think you, you want you want to try we want to try to keep every one of our employees gainfully employed and, and no matter where they are, if they're in the library, they're in the, the highway department, they're they're in the school, we want to keep every single employee employed. Well, how do you do that? Well, I have a suggestion about that, but it doesn't include giving raises and step changes in your salary. Okay, Scott, but you, you have to do it across the board. I understand, Tom. All right, so if you show, if you show, me, show me the plan and that, and that, that we have buy-in across the board, I'll vote for it right now. Well, you know that's not possible. And we just voted with the second for discussion, a budget that shows an increase in salaries while asking other people to freeze their salaries. So we'll, we'll have to see how it all shakes out during the sausage making, if there is such a thing. At the what meeting? Sausage making, you know. Oh, sausage making. I, I again, I just, I want to, I want to treat our, I want to treat all our, I want to treat all of our employees fair. I don't. So, I George, don't, George, are you ready? If we take this vote to, you know, hold tight, that we're just going to wait and make a commitment that we're going to get that step in salary change when we find out if we have any money, or are you going to start on July first talking to us? No, I mean, if, if, if everything goes the way it's supposed to go, then yeah, fine. If, if it doesn't, then, then that's the way it is. It's, I mean, we're in this together. I mean, if that's the way it's going to be, you know what I mean? I mean, 
if you vote on it now and come July or December and there's no money, then there's no money. That's just right. the way it is. That's what I'll have to tell my guys. Right. I appreciate I mean, that, George. I mean, if the, if the school and all them guys decide to, to hold their stuff, then, you know, we'll hold our stuff. It's, it's, it, we're all in this together. I mean, we have to go through it. It's, it's nothing that the town's done. It's, it's, it's a pandemic that, that happens. So. Well, I, I, Deeply value your comments, George. Thank you. Okay. Any more discussion about the total budget? That was the eight seven. Oh, let me get back to it now. Do, do, do. Eight seven sixty three eight twenty two. Uh, and if there's a no longer a discussion, all those in favor of the budget as uh, developed, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, so next up, Warren, right? Now that there's money in place, Article 1 we had is reports, pretty straightforward. Article 2, compensation for elected officials. I'm getting down there, here it comes. Assessors got their salaries, moderator took a zero, planning board got their salaries, town clerk got her salary, and rightly so, select board took zeros. Any discussion about Article 2? If not, is there a recommendation? Uh, motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I want to move right to the motions. To, uh, well, let's do this systematically. So, Jeff, I hope you're furiously typing right now because Article 3 is next. And that is raise an appropriate value, fund from free cash. I'm sorry, excuse me. Fund from 318. Stop beeping. 318 Comcast PEG access, wastewater treatment. Jeff, we have to remove Title V sentence because we're not using Title V. And the value of free cash. How much free cash are we using? We are using 284. 284842. 284842. Is that correct, Elliot? Uh, from this version, wait, I I've got two, no, I'm sorry, that's the other one, 317, 366, I was looking Yeah, just, just for the budget though, okay. it's 268423. 8423, right. <laughs> Wrong spot, I guess. Yep, yep, so 268423 for the operating right. budget. For the OB, uh, yeah. Yeah. Jeff, you've got the sewer reserve in there. We're going to remove Title V. Treatment plant. Is there a motion to include? This is the warrant, not the motion. Motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor of including Article Three? Aye. Aye. Article Four, since we're not moving any money, let's just get rid of it. Right? That's to move money from free cash to stabilization. Clearly, that's not happening this year. So, I'll entertain a motion to remove. Motion. Uh, second. second. Motion's made and seconded to remove Article 4. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Article 5 is the same thing. Moving motion. free cash to capital stabilization. I heard a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor of removing Article 5, signify by saying aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Article 6 is the capital budget, and let's talk about that for just let's, – let's skip over that if we could. Jeff, Article 7, this is another use of free cash, Elliot, and this is uh, – <laughs> uh, this is a burr in the saddle, I guess, is the best way to describe yeah. it. So the town, based on its contribution and its program, excuse me, and its plan delineation, was assessed a value of $15,820 as underfunding uh, its health care contribution. Did I capture that correctly, Jeff? Yes. And we only have one place to put this. The adjustments have been made in the current cycle, and this has to come from free cash or stabilization. 
this is essentially a, an insurance account from the IRS to us, excuse me, essentially a penalty from the IRS to us saying that we underfunded our health insurance account, which I call blank on. <laughs> Discussion? Is there any? any? Yeah. <laughs> That's, I mean, we have to pay it. Yeah, I mean, you got to pay it. Yeah. Is there any way we can uh, end up fighting it after we pay it? Uh, it won't we, cost more than that in legal fees. Yeah, uh, that was the, 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 the advice. Actually, great question. The question was asked, and the advice from council was, "It's not worth fighting over." You can talk to the treasurer collector about that as well. Yeah. So, no more discussion. Is motion to recommend seven? Motion. Back. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> so uh, eight is unpaid bills, $181.33. We did okay last year, except the IRS, but don't get me started. <laughs> Uh, motion to recommend Article 8. This, again, is a coming for free cash. This is all in keeping, Elliot, with the use of cash sheets. Motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded for Article 8. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Call it three to zero, please. Okay. Scooch back up, if we could, to capital plan. Jeff, can we toggle over and throw the capital plan up? Yes. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Hey, there it is. Second page. Nice. Uh, so the capital planning committees met three, four times um, this cycle, a little better than the last one. I appreciate all the work that they do. There was a site visit at the public safety complex a couple weeks ago. Um, you can see that while well, we appropriate, back to use of cash, we appropriate about $115,000. Our goal this year is to leave a little bit of money in there. So we appropriate, I'm sorry, excuse me, we raise one fifteen nine seventy. We had a starting balance of 2228 the budget in front of you, the capital budget recommended by the capital planning committee is for a hundred and thirty seven thousand six hundred and ninety one of which one hundred and three four nine one basically four nine one basically four nine two comes from the appropriation or comes from raise, and then another thirty four thousand two hundred comes from sewer reserve and that's capital specifically to the sewer so you have a total budget request in front of you of 137.69183 the fire department we have ten thousand dollars for scbas we have a highway truck lease this is year four payment this is a debt service through capital stabilization of twenty seven thousand two hundred six. uh at the library there is a uh three projects specific to the building and you roll them all up and they end up being 18,809.80. Uh, one of them is repairing and replacement of the ADA door operator, some acoustical panels being installed in the community room, uh, address noise levels, and then uh, HVAC replacement, which has been an ongoing uh, annual appropriation, 18,809.80 for all three. In the town building, uh, there is an ADA door access upgrade in the back of the building to get into the elevator. That's a value of $9,000. We're hoping bids come in less than that. Uh, then there is the frontier assessment. In their capital plan, there's electric door holders, central clock repairs, intercom repairs, some flooring work. There's a list of things on there. Our assessment in that program is 10,975 and change. 
at the elementary school, flooring repair and replacement, getting away from carpets, going to hard surfaces. And then there's a, a we'll expect to see this for a, as a program for future years, a segmenting of the building where there is some siding and some rim band rot that's going on and you want to address it in stages. So the total between Frontier and the elementary school is 38,475. And then waste treatment is 34,200. And that has to do with level control systems. Again, that's a sidearm uh, money stream. They've got their own straight out of sewer. So our total appropriation, when we get to the motions is gonna be this handout and 137,691.83. I wanna circle back to the Frontier piece. The reason that Frontier is assessing its member towns is that this was one of the things that the working group um, agreed to, to defer the cost of borrowing, paying for small things that can be done in real time, use of E and D money in real time, assessments of the town in real time in the form of motions or warrant articles or capital stabilization uh, keep, saves us, uh, get, for starters, gets the jobs done. And secondly, it also doesn't put this on a debt schedule. Again, I, I, was, the, I was in many of those meetings and the question about why are you borrowing money to replace stair treads? Good question. They don't have a life cycle. Good question. That you know, meets the debt schedule. That's why that's there. I expect to see those cyclical. They could go up and down over the course of years and may not be incorporated in the capital budget, but maybe a warrant article in a future year. But either way, the mechanism keeps us away from paying interest on these repairs. Okay, there, that's my, that's my, that's my stuff. So I'm headed down now to, this is nine, right? Nine. Nope, nope, eight. Yeah. Oh, eight. Eight. Oh, uh, the bills, yep. Yeah. Uh, move to include and or recommend. Motion. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And this okay. is our six, correct? Correct. Six. I was just looking at it. I was like, there it is. Okay, so we discarded four. We discarded five. We included six. Uh, we included seven. And eight is included. Let's talk about ditches. Nine. Uh, Scott, I'd, I'd like to make a motion to withdraw Article 9. Not, not what I, I, I do think it's important. Um, but what I, would, what I would recommend for the remainder of this year is to have us put some things together, such as um, have the highway superintendent do a survey of all the culverts um, and their condition, um, and and I, I think that we have a start, and there's some information that we have to put together so we can bring a better number to uh, the town next year. That's fair. So you develop yeah, a, a real good. a real RFI about that, Tom. Yeah. Right. Okay. Can, so, but I, but I but I do think I do think uh, I will talk to I'll I'll talk to George and maybe maybe take a ride with take a ride with him. And just to look at some of the culverts and to identify. And I know, I know George has done a good job the last couple of years of replacing a, cul a couple of culverts and saving us a boatload of money. So uh, I think it's a good time for us to go around and, and inspect our culverts. And uh, and I think the cog the cog will offer some help on plotting those for us also on GIS. So I, I think it's a good start. Okay, I was speaking with Jeff earlier today to talk with the. Uh speak with the folks in Deerfield about some of the resiliency money that's out there and how to possibly use that. So, okay. So uh, move to withdraw. Is there a second? Second. Motion to remove, excuse me, remove. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The warrant just gets easier and easier. We already did uh, nine. Hang on. I'm going to go back up to my cheat sheet. 10 we recommended, right? So sewage imaging was done, Jeff, and then North Main Street, what's going to, what used to be 11. So if you look at the use of free cash, excuse me, the use of revenues, use of cash sheet, the only tap on stabilization this year 
is Article 11. And that Article 11 is for the final engineering, 100% design submission, plans and specification engineering documents. And then lastly, Jeff, the easement acquisition is an estimate, correct? That is correct. And that puts a, a bow tie around the bid package to send in to DOT. Is that correct also? That is my understanding, yes. They said this Great. is the last thing. I'm just noticing it should say plan specifications and estimates document, not engineer. Sorry. So you're gonna change Article 11 one, to third sentence. Instead of plan specifications and engineering, you want that to be plan specification and estimating or estimates. Yes. Okay. Tom or David, questions about the change in the language? I, I think um, we've been waiting a long time for this project. And if anybody <laughs> driven, tried to ride a bicycle on North Main Street <laughs> lately, they would uh, tell you that uh, we do so at their own peril. So, and I, I, point. <clears throat> we need to get this one done. Okay, so with the change in language, is a motion a motion to recommend? Oh, uh, Scott. Motion. Oh, 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 hang on. I heard, I heard a voice in the distance. It, it's Wendy. Um, I'm wondering if maybe on the warrant article that you might not want to put the totals and save those for the motion just because now you're within a strict scope. Uh, that's true. You're actually blending. Yep. So I don't know, you know, if you could just say to see if the town will vote to provide or, you know, raise an appropriate transfer mm -hmm. or whatever, provide a sum of money to. Um, yep. No, I, you have raise a time, I have a hard time reading the little letters. Um, no, you but, raise a really good point. This is usually generic and then the discussion rolls in via the motions. Great. Point. That, you know, that way you have at least a little bit more time if numbers were going to change. That's true on those, on that, yeah. And, and then another thing to scoop back to Article 2, elected wages. Um, right. You know, the moderator zeroed out and the selectmen are zeroed out. I think yep. um, that's, that's really nice. Um, but that also is not fiscally responsible. If, if you don't want to take a wage, that's fine. You don't need to, but you should have those wages in there, and they should be counted. Um, I don't. I don't think that's a. I I get what you guys were trying to do, commendable, but I. I don't think um, it's that drastic. It's certainly not the eight hundred thousand dollars from years ago. Um, that those salaries need to go out. Just my point of view. Well, thanks for, thanks for the input. I appreciate that. Jeff, on the language, generic language for the warrant, I think uh, Wendy raises a really good point. Uh, it's specific inside the, inside the motions, yep. and it's kind of, I look at, where is it? Language. Language for the original Article Nine, right? Move that. It's, move that the town, not if the town. Move that the town will appropriate sums or sums of money to hire professional services. If you looked at that under the eleven piece, you could use the same language there. Move that the town vote to sums of money. Dot 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 dot. And then the motion is much more specific, and it reads much more like this. Okay. Oh. Do, 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 do. Tom, David, do you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah, Scott. I think that's good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with that general uh, language in there, again, the backstory here is uh, the ask in the motion is going to be 106065. It's going to come from stabilization specifically, and it is for the last of documentation and bid documents uh, for uh, North Main Street's reconstruction. 
All those in favor of the generic language and recommendation? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Okay, back to my cheat sheet. Where am I on that cheat sheet? North Main Street and the rest we got recommended. Hey, look at us doing stuff and things. There's one quick thing, which is the last version, uh, you had voted to include the uh, one article for the Frontier Capital request, and that was moved to Article 6. So I don't know if you feel like oh, you need to. Let me go back down there. Since we moved it to the capital budget, right? Yep. So remove the article. Mm -hmm. So I see capital, excuse me, Article 6. Article five is what you could, no, hang on now. Frontier, no capital, remove this oh, article. Do, 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 three, four. So capital stabilization was removed. Article five, as I see it, right? Free cash to capital stabilization was removed. Yeah. We took that vote tonight. Article six was the capital budget. That's where the frontier element resides. Why would we remove anything, Jeff? Uh, so previously you had voted to include a Warren article um, specifically for the frontier capital, and I'm just trying to look it up in your... Mm. Okay. Yeah, I don't see it. 11, 12... I think this ha it's not in the, the agenda packet for this week. Oh, okay. So we, you said we voted it before and then it got yes, edited out. You voted to include it. Okay. So um, is there a motion to remove the frontier capital assessment as a standalone article? Motion. Second, Scott. Motion's made and seconded. Remove. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. See, that's Thank how you. the town administrator oop, hang on there goes my thing just fell oh. over hang on <laughs> it's crazy talk technical says difficulties I, says i have to unlock things now hang on almost there there you are okay so that one's gone so jeff that takes care of our warrant sheets right yes all right we can sign the warrant there's a signature page here correct there is excellent uh, motions, right? This is where the nitty gritty happens. And we have one more meeting before annual town meeting in the event something has to be adjusted in the motion. Where are we in? Do, 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 Hang on. Pages. I got two town warrants. Hmm. Um, and am I reading one like a motion? I, one. Uh, you can, I think, tell by the header. I know it, mm -hmm. does, it says warrant at the top of the page, but yeah. the one that says all uh, doesn't have the location. Should be, I think, the one second. that just says 2020 annual town warrant, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Yeah, and then the first full sentence, all articles. Yep. That's yeah, so that's the motions. Okay. Move at the town wall. So uh so let's go through some recommendations here. Article two was homework. We have those plugged in. So a motion to recommend based on our prior discussion. Now that we have a budget draft. Motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Jeff, can we tighten up the language on Article 3 so next week we yes. can vote the actual motion? Yep. We've already eliminated four. We've eliminated five. Uh, capital budget, that's pretty straightforward. We have a handout. Is there any discussion about that? There's no other revenue sources, and it's spelled out mm -hmm. in front of us. Motion. Second. Motion's made and seconded to recommend a motion under Article Capital Budget. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Again. Aye. Okay. Stop. Hang on. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Could you humor me a little bit and put the numbers in the warrant 
And then in the motion, if you want to um, make an amendment, fine. But again, you the scope of zero is not very good if anybody wanted to amend it up. So I think it would be better maybe if you guys did the amendment and kept the numbers in. So how does that affect us on our general budget? We'd have to add those salaries back in and take it away from free cash, available resources. Well, yeah, I and mean, it might not get your amendment and it might not pass. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I mean, it's your stuff. Just, and I'm just asking, maybe look, put it, put look, the numbers in the warrant. Look, what, what we wanted to do is that we wanted to do this one year with the understanding that the numbers go back next year. The board, of, the, the, the select board has, has made it very evident to anybody that listens that we are in dire economic straits. People may not notice it right now, but we have, but there are, there's an economic reckoning that's going to have to come forward and we have to position for ourselves for that, Wendy. And I appreciate the fact that you want to put the numbers back in, but right now, I don't think it's, it, it'd be, it'd be, and, and, and then we, and then if we didn't take the salary, then we would, then we'd just be decreasing um, free cash by $10,000 and we wouldn't be able to get it done. And we wouldn't have that money back until later and later springtime of uh, 2021. So I, at the earliest, I, I just, I understand what you're saying. I just don't see it working. And I know I shouldn't argue with a town clerk, but. Well, it messes up my pension. I've been doing this so long. I was counting on bankrolling <laughs> Scott, that for my, my $2,000. Scott, you get absolutely nothing for pension. No. <laughs> nothing, Scott. Zero. I know. Get a pat 18, on the back. 18 years. No, nothing. David, no. No, you don't even get a pat on yeah. the back. You get a <laughs> kick in the butt, David. Come on. Move, move along, uh, nothing to see here. Keep thank moving. you, town clerk. <laughs> okay. Um, Article 7 we did already. Eight unpaid bills since we didn't know what we were doing. So is there a recommendation for this to come from? Hang on. Jeff? Free cash, right? It's got to come from free cash. Free cash. Yeah. Motion. So that language has got to read from free cash. Exactly. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ditches, three to zero, please. Ditches are removed. Uh, we already did 10. Uh, number 11, that's stabilization to North Main Street Construction Engineering. This motion shows it's specifically from stabilization. Any discussion? Motion. Second. That was a good discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Our authorizations are done. CPA, we've taken action on. That's all done. Look at that. We might even have a warrant. We have recommendations on CPA revenues for future years. Jeff, can we talk about $273,305? and what it means if we go and borrow that. This would be article 22. Sure, yes. So, um, you, Park you're Grant. talking about what, what the interest would be, or? Are we gonna really borrow $273,305 this year? No, we are not. That's um, the golden question. The the idea is that we have uh, several CPA articles related to Riverside Park. Um, and so we were going to leverage those funds uh, to be the match for the park grant, but the park grant requires uh, town meeting action uh, for the total amount of uh, the, of the, the project. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, this is one of the articles that the council provided a recommendation on and 
we looked up what Sunderland would be eligible for in the park grants and it's 68%. Um, so basically it's contingent on getting the, the full amount that Sunderland's eligible for. And the total amount, the 273 comes from the uh, All CPA articles, the um, kayak kiosk, uh, the archeological, <clears throat> survey, um, the next phase of the park design, believe those are the three so what happens if we don't get the park grant if we don't get the park grant then um, we are not required to uh, borrow two hundred and seventy three thousand three hundred and five dollars so the it buried in this language right after or related there too provided however no funds expended until the town has received a grant commitment in a total of 68 percent of such costs yep. so so are we on the hook for 273 times 0. 0.42 or 38 32 32 sorry thanks quick math <laughs> it was that was the full exercise of my high school diploma the, that that point three two Scott is um, what uh, the CPA appropriate the, the CPA grant represents. So this would this this would require no money from the town budget at all. So if it all falls into place, Sarah, the the vote here secures the opportunity to apply for said grant. Exactly. Perfect. See, we made a good team. We're, we're trying to avoid a special town meeting. Right, for the... Yeah. Got it. Tom, what do you think? Uh, I think that the park, the park group has done a wonderful job, and, and if we can get this park grant, we will just uh, add exponentially to our river park and the park area altogether. So I, I would support it one, one million percent, Scotty. Great. So to be clear, the town's already done that, and this was yet another way of informing the public of what we're gonna talk about at town meeting. Absolutely, Scott. Okay, I think we've got the rest of ours are all three zero. Thank you for that input, Sarah. We're You're all welcome. three zeros. Okay, next up for us. Um, we Jeff, have... really quick. Uh, Hang on. I'm sorry to interrupt, Did, uh, was under the impression that uh, finance committee recommended that as well uh, for oh. uh, yes oh, okay I when I went by earlier I thought I didn't see that right. yep it's on 22 Elliot the park grant Elliot okay so uh, Jeff can we talk hang on agenda where did you go do, do, do. Not the Zoom meeting, not the minutes, not my scratch paper. Do, do, do. Can we talk about town meeting logistics? Yes. Right, so we're, we're good. We can sign the warrant. We have motions that will be a final draft next week. Thank you everybody for that lively discussion. I appreciate it. And it's gonna be an interesting year and hopefully we all row in the same direction. That includes the people who are asking to take a pay freeze. What the hell did I do with those? So logistics for annual town meeting, June 6th, 4 p.m. Did I get that right, town clerk? Doo, doo, doo. Yes, you did. Good job. <laughs> hey, there's my sheet. So we want to- And now you got a pat in the back. No, it's, it's at the town <laughs> hall. It's because of the ridiculous sum that we're paid next year. Um, right. So we're going to come in the back of the building here. There is a six foot spacing piece. There is some utilities work. Um, there's also the question about uh, voting. Since we're going to have lots of spacing, right? I think we're going to have like Anybody ever watch Conway and they have cards? So Waitley. I think the, yeah. Waitley as well. Yep. They're talking about having a, a handout bag. 
for everybody who comes in and registers, because it's still a town meeting, and you still need to be a resident, still need to be a registered voter. Uh, and that said, we're going to have some tables on the black top, like half the distance. We're going to have handicapped parking. And then we're going to pour out just off of the black top headed north toward the greens. Jeff, can you put that up there? Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. We're going to have a non-voter section, a handicapped priority area, and uh, then the areas for the area for uh, moderator, select board, finance committee, lawyer, and town clerk who records everything. So everybody sees this in front of them. The handicap access is a straight line. That's very accommodating. Um, we have area out. Is there a plot that goes with this, Jeff, we could throw up there as well? Yes. Something that looks like that. Hey, Excel, can't, what can't you do with squares? <laughs> So back to the visual piece, you can see that we're going to be outdoors. Uh, and in the event of weather, I think I'd like to have entertain the, the board's discussion about the two ways we can go about postponing. If it's really miserable, you can call the town meeting, they can vote, assemble and postpone, or the principals, that being the board of selectmen who call it, the moderator who manage it, manages it the town clerk who records it can get together vote and then to a date certain and i think i'd like to put out there you know five day forecasts are pretty accurate but somewhere between two and three days we would want to warn the public if it really looks crappy oh, that makes sense tom what do you think uh, Scott, my uh, class graduated. Um, we were the first class to have a uh, outdoor graduation, and uh, we we handled all the things that they threw at us. And the easiest, the very easiest thing was, what do we do if there's bad weather? And we made a simple thing: twenty four hours before the thing, we would be called inside or outside. So I would right. say you want to make it 24 hours, 48 hours out of that. We have code red that we can notify everybody. We can put it up on the web page. We have the sign. I would say 48 hours before we, we make a call. If, it, if, it's no, if it's no go, we send it out and say, hey, it's no go. Um, and, then, and just announce the next date at that same time, that same message. Okay. It, it's, it's, it's not it, – yeah, I don't, we don't have to make it difficult. Yep. You know? Okay. So again, when people come in, there's still a check-in. Think about it like the gymnasium, right? There's still a check-in. You still have to be a, a participant to town meeting, or if you're an observer, non-voter, you still end up needing to check in. You're going to get a handout that's going to allow you to, excuse me, a small sample bag. You're going to have some town meeting materials. There's also the availability, if you're close enough, to use Wi-Fi from the town office building. So, uh, Mr. Scott? Yeah? I, I, would, I would say that I, I would highly recommend that people bring their own chairs. Yep. Right. Right. Everybody bring their own chairs. Yep. That if you have a um, phone, iPad, laptop, computer, that uh, you don't, you wouldn't, everything is going to be, all the packet is going to be online. So you'll have all that information. So you could, you, you don't even, you don't even have to touch any paper. You, you have the, you have a, your own laptop, and you should be able to get on. Be able to get on Wi-Fi. Yep. Uh, you still need to get your your cards to wave to vote. That you you get your cards if you want right to be able to get a red card, a green card, or a white card. Red Correct. card is a no. Green card is a yes. And a white card means you have a question. Not in France. White means surrender. <laughs> <laughs> You can get away with saying that, Mr. Bergeron. Yes, I can. Yes, you can. <laughs> Town clerk, do we capture those uh, elements well enough? I think you have. 
That's two things we did right tonight. Yes. Okay. So look for updates for annual town meeting no later than July. Excuse me. There I am. Wrong month. June 4th. Please come to participate. And we'll move on to select board updates. But Scott, Oops. did you say June 4th? The, our, notice, our notice to the public would be if there's a change on June 4th, oh, 48 I'm hours. Sorry. Yep, annual town meeting is June 6th, and the annual election is also June 6th, 8 to 12 at the library. Please send in your notice and try to vote by mail. It makes just so much easier this year. And you can do that via the town website, or you can call the town clerk. Okay, select board updates. I got nothing. Mr. No. Mr. Chair, last, last uh, Thursday evening, we had a, uh, an emergency meeting of the Franklin Regional Council of Government. Oh, yeah. Um, at that meeting, the... Uh, what happened is the um, executive director of Linda Dunlavey and, and her staff worked with the CESA on Franklin, which is the farming organization, sustainability, sustainability uh, uh, farming, uh, the Franklin County Chamber of Commerce. And what, and what, they, what they tried to do was um, survey all those businesses and municipalities to find out what they needed as we as we uh, as we put together um, the governor put together the reopening of Massachusetts. So what the club is going to do is that they are they are putting together uh, a list of PPE that are needed. They're asking all the towns and the small businesses and what the council voted was to spend up to $50,000 to buy this uh, equipment. So instead of businesses having to worry about how to buy PPE, who to get it from, the, the FERCOG is going to have that so that, he, that our businesses and, and uh, municipalities can buy directly from the FERCOG instead of fighting for one another over trying to buy PPE. It's a great, it's a great program that the COG is offering. And a, and a great use of, of what, you know, their original charge was. Absolutely, Scott. And I, I talked to the uh, executive director offline and I told her that's spot on. Um, and, and we've all seen how, how states have been fighting with one another over limited resources. And, and the FERCOG has already been able to identify many, many um, vendors that are willing to sell the bulk that they're talking about. You know, because they're talking about nice. buying, they're talking about buying hundred, you know, 10,000 masks, not, not, you know, one or two. So, and they'll get a better price at the same time. Nice. Well, I'm glad to hear that. David, you're all set? No, I'm good. Yep. Okay. We have to sign the town, uh, the town warrant. But before that, Jeff, are you ready to come out of hiding yet? We think we saw the sighting of you on Friday. <laughs> yes. Oh. And it, I might be sighted tomorrow at noon. We're going to do a sound check uh, for the outdoor town meeting, set up the sound system, make sure we can hear all the way in the back. Uh huh. Uh, and then officially come out of hiding, I think, following town meeting. Nice. Oh, right. Mr. Mr. Chair, if I could sure. for one second, you, you start, you uh, had, uh, had in your opening remarks, you had mentioned the, uh, the Friday uh, memorial um, services. I yes. would just like, I, I would just like to take an op this op opportunity to thank Jim Ewan. I think Jim uh, did an outstanding job putting things together. Um, it, it, it was spot on. Um, it was a small, it was a small, it was a small group. Um, it was, but it was, it was done very respectfully and, and it, it's honored the tradition that Sunderland has established 
I, I know it's been going on for 40 plus years. So it's pro it's a lot longer than that. So I was, I was very, I was very proud to be able to participate. Um, and, and, and in addition, I would just mention that uh, Natalie and Joe Comfort were there. I would just like to also thank them um, because they didn't have to be there, but they, but they thought they thought it was important enough to be there. And and I, I'm eternally grateful for those for our two elected um, state rep and the state senator for showing up um, because it really spoke volumes of of what they care about and what the veterans and our in our uh, um, men and women in the armed forces mean to to them as well as to us. So I'd like to thank them as well. Great points, Tom, and I, I, I would echo those. It was nice to, nice to see them, every, see everybody participate and, and celebrate and remember those, uh, those lost lives. Jeff, any other pearls of wisdom? I, I just wanted to ask on uh, town meeting, does the select board recommend or, or have a preference for whether we should have staging or uh, the the tables in front raised um, for visibility or we don't need to be up on a stage Scott no we can be yeah there's, I mean, there's no point okay. as long as people can hear us I think that's the most important part yeah. okay. Thank you. if they paid any attention they look like more likely to look away these days <laughs> Well, I think the moderator has to be able to see all the way too. That's He's absolutely true. He's standing up. Yeah, he gets nice podium. Thing. He gets two hay bales. Come on. <laughs> nice, easy workstation to stand on. Soft on the legs. It's simple. There you go. I will say, um, all states is donating um, single little spray pump sanitizer. 125 of them and the millstone is donating bigger sanitizer and um water oh. Oh. Well, send them a thank you from our office as well that's a great reminder wendy so again that's june 6th 4 p.m here behind the town office building the election is June 6th, 8 to 12 at the library, please try to vote by via mail. It's a whole lot cleaner and easier for everybody this year. There's no contested ballots and there's no, no contested seats. And there's no um, questions on the ballot. So not that we want to keep people from. Mr. Chair, feel like, could you yes. ask the, uh, on the, on the national, on the national scene, there, there have people talking about uh, fraud being committed by voting by mail. Could you ask our town clerk to address that, please? Well, I think, I mean, absentee ballots, um, early voting ballots are all signed affidavits, and then they have to come back to us, signed by the voter. So, um, I will say what I was always told by elections division is if there is a fraud happening, it would be really big. It wouldn't be one or two people. And, um, and, and then they get caught. So um, I don't think that that is an issue at all. Absentee voting and actually early voting since that has gone, has worked really well. And most of the time, the, the concern is, is that we don't count absentee ballots, um, which we do count on, on the day of the election. They go in with all the regular ballots. So to be clear, this is the same method that a service, a service person serving overseas would use in their home state, correct? <laughs> right. The, the only, overseas uh, voters and military do have oh. the option to vote by email. Oh, now they do. Okay, that's cool. Okay. Very good. Thanks, Tom, for the for the for the pointer to remind people that you know elections are largely local and substantially 
safe and legit. Regar regardless of what what is being spewed out nationally, uh, and, and I and I just I just I personally I know how hard the town clerks the town clerks put a lot of time and effort across the state and the secretary of state as well to to make things happen and make things happen right, and for someone just to arbitrarily dismiss all the work and, and hard work they put into it, I just I just have a I've because I, I I've seen how hard the town clerk in our town works. And and I just remember a few years ago the town clerk in Shootsbury, she did there was a very important vote that they had taken up there and 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 that town clerk and I think it went through three different levels of uh of oh, yeah. and she and she was spot on the entire time. So we're just lucky to have dedicated people like that. Great point. Great point. Okay. So again, this it's the sixth four. For town meeting, it's the sixth, eight to twelve. Please vote by mail, and that's at the library. But you can vote by mail earlier, and that would save a fair amount of personal contact. So, any other discussion tonight? One second, Scott. Um, I, Elliot had your head written there about uh, local farmers and PPE, and I would say, Elliot, and if if you're still out there, if you're not, it's it's unfortunate, but. If, if, if there's a farmer or there's a business that's out there that's looking for P, that's looking for PPE, get, get a hold of the FERCOG or the uh, Franklin Chamber of Commerce and they will, they will make it happen. They, they, have, they, have, they have promised, they have committed themselves to making sure that no business in our, town, in our towns doesn't have the necessary PPE that they need. Nice, good point, Tom. It's not exclusive to municipalities. It is not. In, in matter of fact, they're partnered with CISA, and they're also part, partnered with uh, uh, the Franklin Chamber of Commerce. And there's other, Scott, there's other, one other uh, business group that's out there that they also partnered with. And, and, and when they had done a survey, they had sent out 100 surveys. They had 95 responses, and there was 30, $32,400 worth of PPE that was needed. Wow. Well, let's hope the let's hope the program, you know, is effective and the cog uh, gets its mojo on with this because it could lead to other great things it could help with. Okay, any more discussion? Not hearing any. Is I would entertain a motion to adjourn motion. so Jeff can do his homework. Motion. Second, grudgingly. We're having so much fun. <laughs> Motions <laughs> made and seconded. All those in favor of adjourning. Signify by saying aye.